Hello church, I'm Derek Clark, an elder at Bethany Baptist Church. Uh, so just a few days ago we celebrated Independence Day. Uh, it's always been one of my favorite holidays and not because of the fireworks. I'm actually usually bored by fireworks. Um, but because it's an annual reminder that um, despite an admittedly tainted past, uh, the United States has still acted as a safe haven or even a beacon of hope for millions and millions of people around the world um, and provided a freedom that's just really unparalleled when compared to most of the rest of the world. I serve in the U.S. Air Force uh, because I love this country and the freedom uh, that it offers. Uh, I wanted to have a small part in uh, protecting that freedom as much as I could. I still work for the federal government today, uh, kind of for that same reason. I fly the stars and stripes out in front of our house, all that. Um, I love this country. Uh, but despite that, uh, I'm here to say that if when we hear the word freedom, all we think of is the Constitution or the Bill of Rights or our right to vote, um, uh, things like uh, the Stars and Stripes themselves. Uh, if that's all that we think about when we hear the word freedom, then we really don't understand what true freedom is. Um, here in the U U.S. and literally every other country on this planet, freedom as the world thinks of it is actually very limited and fleeting. Um, whatever country you may think provides the most freedom uh, has limitations on its freedom. Uh, for example, if you do happen to view the U.S. as being the country that provides the most freedom, uh, all you have to do really is um, watch the news, uh, turn on the news channel, uh, hop on the social media platform of your choice, and pretty quickly we realize that we still have a lot of major issues in this uh, very free country of ours. Uh, from racism to ageism uh, to sexism to innumerable, innumerable <laughs> uh, other isms uh, that we can think of. Uh, not everyone enjoys the same amount of freedom all the time in this country. Uh, and that's why we need to understand what true, true freedom is, uh, and that's freedom in Jesus Christ. Uh, John 8.36 says, If the Son sets you free, you are truly free. So how did the Son, Jesus Christ, uh, set us free? And how does that differ from the freedom that we think of generally when we hear that word? This past Sunday, uh, Bobby actually led us uh, in a praise song called Living Hope that I think actually kind of sums it up uh, fairly well and uh, kind of hit me on Sunday morning. It says, well, at least one of the verses says, Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is the victory. And then the chorus goes on to say, Hallelujah, you're the one who set me free. Hallelujah, sin has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. So freedom, from a biblical perspective, has nothing to do with our ability to realize our dreams or do anything we put our minds to. We hear that quite often in this country as um, uh, a way of like kind of describing the freedom we have. Uh, but really it has everything to do with the creator of the universe sacrificing himself uh, to pay the debt of our sin and conquering death in the process. Um, in Romans 8, 2, Paul said, And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death, to death. So all of humanity is bound by the chains of sin, condemned to eternal punishment and separation from God. Uh, but when we put our faith in Jesus, uh, we're pardoned from our sin and freed from our punishment. The huge difference between worldly freedom and biblical Christ-centered freedom is limited versus infinite, uh, temporary versus eternal, uh, false versus true. Uh, as Christians, when we truly understand what sort of freedom we have, it allows us to do great things for God as he works through us to advance his kingdom. The Bible is full of men and women who understand what true freedom uh, is, and the results were incredible. Uh, Hebrews 11 provides a wonderful summary of these types of people. Uh, this chapter is often referred to as the Hall of Faith by uh, Christians because of the incredible faith displayed by the individuals uh, listed. Uh, while I, and while I don't want to do anything to diminish the true topic of chapter 11, uh, that being faith and what faith does for us, I do think it's safe to say that an increasing faith in Jesus Christ would lead inevitably to an increased understanding of our freedom in Jesus Christ. Uh, so looking at chapter 11, by faith and with a correct view of our freedom in Christ, 
Noah overcame ridicule to build the ark in verse uh, 7. Abraham left his people to start a new nation wherever God led him, uh, verses 8 through 10. Um, verses 11 through 12, Sarah conceived children despite being old and barren, and her descendants became as numerous as the stars. Um, 24 through 29, Moses led millions of Hebrew slaves out of Egypt, uh, out of slavery. And uh, Rahab risked her life to save uh, enemy Israelite spies despite the looming uh, destruction of her town. Uh, and chapter 11 just continues to list several, several other examples, uh, but you get the point. Uh, so as we hear uh, the Independence Day celebrations and fireworks fade over the next few days, uh, as political ads and debates really start to heat up uh, leading up to November and the elections, uh, as we continue to watch and read about the evil that occurs on a daily basis in this world, uh, let's not get discouraged. Because um, even though the freedom this world has to offer is temporary and flawed, uh, the freedom we have in Jesus Christ is guaranteed and perfect. Thank you, and God bless.